Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Canva is a fantastic free design tool for teachers. From slideshow presentations to worksheets to classroom decor, you can use it to create so many different resources. In this video, I'm going to show you five more Canva hacks that will blow your mind. So grab your device and get ready to follow along. Now, the reason I said more Canva hacks is because I have already created one video with five of my favorites. So if you have not already watched that video, the link for it will be down in the description box and it is also on my Canva video playlist. Also, don't forget teachers get access to all of the Canva Pro features for free by registering through Canva for Education. So the link for that will be down in the description box as well. And let's jump into the Canva hacks. Hack number one is to add photos directly from Google Drive. Yes, you heard me correctly. You can actually connect Canva to your Google Drive and insert images from there rather than having to download them from Google Drive and then separately upload them into Canva. So I just have a blank slideshow presentation file in Canva. I'm going to click on uploads and then up at the top next to the purple button that says upload files, I'm going to click the three dots and you will notice the third option down says Google Drive. I'm going to click that. Now, if this is your first time clicking that option, you will need to connect your Google Drive to Canva. Once you have done that, you will see all of your Google Drive folders listed and you can navigate them and find the photo you want to insert. So for example, I might go to my teaching folder right here. And then maybe I have this multiplication chart that I want to insert. I can just select it and it will be inserted into my Canva file. Once you have connected Google Drive to your Canva account, you can view it under your apps. So if you click on apps on the left hand side, and then click on your apps at the top, you can see all of the apps you have connected to your Canva account, including Google Drive. At any point, if you want to remove access, you can just click the three dots and then choose remove from your apps. If for some reason you have an image or a video file in your Google Drive, but it's not letting you insert it into Canva, it is most likely due to either the file size or the file type. At least at this moment, Canva will support images up to 25 megabytes and they need to be in the file type of either JPEG, PNG, SVG, or HEIC. I am downloading some N3P. For video files, at least at this point, Canva will support files up to 100 megabits and they need to either be GIF, MP4, MOV, MPEG, M4V, MKV, or WEBM. And yes, I had to read that off of a list because I could not remember them all. Hack number two is embedding a YouTube video in your Canva file. Now there are actually two different ways that you can go about doing this. The first one is by far the easiest. All you need to do is copy the YouTube link and then paste it into Canva. So for example, this was always one of my favorite YouTube videos when I taught fourth grade math. It's called Hiking the Place Value Chart. Hello, fourth graders. It's fantastic. It's super cheesy, but my kids always loved it. All I need to do is copy that link, come back over to Canva, and then I'm just going to paste directly on the slide. It's going to insert in that video. From there, I can move it around on the screen. I can also resize it, make it smaller or larger. And at any point, if I want to replace that with another video, I can click the pen icon to edit the link and I can change that link. The second way that you can embed YouTube videos is actually using the YouTube app. You may have already noticed this, but when we went to apps under your apps, I already have added the YouTube app, but if it's your first time, you can just search for it by typing in YouTube. From there, again, you're going to select it, give it access, and you can search on YouTube for a video such as hiking the place value chart. And then once you find the video you want to insert, just click on it and it's going to pop it onto your slide. It looks exactly the same as when you just copy and paste the link. So personally, I find it easiest to do that, but you can use the app as well. 
Now I will say one downside of this, at least at this time, is that you cannot set the videos to automatically play. So if I go to present this slideshow, I have to physically click on the play button in order for the video to start. There is no setting to make it play automatically. Whereas if you insert a file directly from Canva, that's a video, or you upload your own video into Canva and insert it, you can set it to play automatically. But if the video is coming from YouTube, you do have to click that play button. Hack number three is keyboard shortcuts. If you saw my first Canva hacks video, you may remember that I showed you how to use magic shortcuts, which are little animations and tools that you can use when you are presenting a Canva file, such as a slideshow. And those are fantastic, but there are also keyboard shortcuts you can use while you are editing a Canva file as well. I'm just gonna run through a few that I think are most useful. The first one being the Canva assistant. Now you can just click on the button right here and get the Canva assistant, but you can also click the slash on your keyboard and it will open that up as well. The next few are for text boxes and shapes. If you click T when you are in edit mode, it is going to pop up a text box. Then if you click off of the text box and click R, it will insert in a rectangle, which of course you can resize, recolor, move around, all that good stuff. Once again, if you deselect that rectangle and click C, it will insert in a circle. And then if you click off and click L, it will insert in a line. The next one is a resizing hack. So I'm gonna take this little square and if I go to the corner and start moving it, you'll notice that my square quickly becomes various sized rectangles. But if you hold down shift as you click and drag, it's going to resize proportionately. So it's gonna keep that ratio and those dimensions in place and just make it smaller or larger. One that I use most often would be duplicating an element. So this is gonna make an exact copy of the element and an element could be a text box, an image, a video, etc. If you are using a Mac, it's gonna be Command D. If you are using a PC, it will be Control D. And rather than repeating that again and again and again, whenever I say Command, if you're using a PC, just remember it's control. <laughs> Another really cool way to duplicate an element is to hold down on a Mac the option button and then click on the element and you will just make new ones as many as you need. If you are on a PC, you're gonna hold down Alt and then click and drag. You can also select elements and group them by holding down command and pressing G. So if I select both this circle and rectangle, I can hold down command G in order to group them. There also was that little group button, which might be faster for you, but if you prefer using your keyboard, there you go. You can also ungroup them by holding down command shift G. You can also insert a link and attach it to any element, such as a text box or an image, by selecting the element you want to link, holding down Command and clicking K. From there, you can just paste in the URL and it will be linked. You can undo and redo using Command Z to undo. So you'll notice the last action that I finished was ungrouping those elements. So since I undid it, now they are regrouped. And then you can do redo by clicking Command Shift Z. You can also easily zoom in or out using Command plus or Command minus on your keyboard. Now, even though the plus sign is up at the top, and so in theory, you should have to hit shift in order to do it, you're just clicking the keyboard key that has the plus sign. So it's just Command and then like the equal sign or plus sign, whatever is easier for you to remember. You can also align your text in the text box using keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and click T to insert in a new text box. And let's make this larger. So that way it's nice and easy to see. We'll move it down here. And let's just, let's clean this up because I cannot. <laughs> okay, so now I have this text box. I can use keyboard shortcuts to align the text to the left, center, or right. So for each one, I'm gonna hold down Command Shift. L will align it to the left. C will align it to the center. And R will align it to the right. You can also convert your text to uppercase letters by holding down Command Shift K. You can also copy and paste an element style. So let's say I 
format this text the way that I want. So I center align it, maybe I change the font, we'll use that one, that's fine. Make it a size 40. Then if I insert in a new text box, so I'm just gonna click here where it says add a heading. If I want to have the same font and text style, all of that to be the same, I can actually use keyboard shortcuts. The first thing I'm gonna do is copy the element style. So if I want to copy this element, I'm going to click to select it. On my keyboard, I'm gonna hold down Command Option C to copy it. If you're using a PC, it would be Control Alt C. Now I'm going to paste it by clicking the other text box. I'm gonna hold down Command Option V, or if you are using a PC, it would be Control Alt V in order to paste it. Now you can also do this using the little paintbrush. So right up here, it will copy the style and then you can click on the other element to paste the style. But if you prefer using keyboard shortcuts, there you go. Hack number four is the background remover. This one may not be revolutionary for you. You might've already known about it and you may have used it on various images. However, did you know that you can also remove the background on videos in Canva? I'm gonna show you how to do both. So let's start by removing the background on an image. I'm gonna go to my uploads and I'm gonna select this image of me pointing. Very nice. Now, let's say I want to get rid of all the background of my office and I want it to be just me sitting in the chair pointing. I'm going to, with the photo selected, choose edit photo. And from here, I'm going to select background remover. It'll take a few seconds as it analyzes the image, for the most part, it does a pretty good job, but if you do need to go in and kind of clean it up, you can. You can click on these little slider things. It's the configure button. From there, you can choose to erase or restore various parts of the images, and you can adjust your brush size and even show or hide that original image in order to help you out along the way. But as I mentioned, it typically does a pretty good job. Now I can put myself over in the corner, and if I change the the background of the slide, for example, this pink color, then I blend right in and there's no background in the way. Now, similarly, you can do this with videos. I will say the videos, it's not as great. However, I think because it's in development, I'm optimistic that it will get better. But for example, if I go to elements and I search tiger, we'll come over to videos and Let's do this one of it walking, super cool. So I've just got a plain video of a tiger walking. If I want to remove the background with the video selected, again, I'm gonna click edit video, and then you'll notice the background remover. Again, it's gonna take a few seconds, and as I said, it's not perfect, but it might be good enough to kind of get the job done. From there, of course, I can resize it as needed, and then with it plain, you will notice that clear, transparent background. So just a quick idea, something like this, you could have a video of an animal and maybe you're having discussions about habitats. So you could have one slide with the video with the transparent background. Students see the animal and you have discussions about the actual habitat that animal lives in. And then maybe on the next slide, you reveal what the actual background and habitat was and you discuss how close or far away you were but obviously the options and ways that you could use this are endless. Hack number five has to do with selecting layers. Sometimes when you have a bunch of different elements and they overlap each other, it can get really hard to select the one that you need. Maybe there's a text box that's underneath of an image and you're trying to click on it, but you keep clicking the image. I'm gonna show you a few different ways to navigate around that. But first, let's insert just some random shapes and things and get them on the slide. So let's insert in a rectangle and I'm just gonna like make it a little bit wider. We'll make this one pink. Now let's do a circle. And again, I'm using all those keyboard shortcuts. Let's make this circle orange and we'll kind of overlap it. Nice, let's get a text box in there. I'm gonna put example text and we'll make it nice and large. Okay, let's add one more circle. And we'll make this circle yellow and make it like really, really big. And let's make it cover that rectangle. Okay, 
that looks really ugly, but it's beside the point. So the first hack is to actually click and drag with your mouse so that you are covering multiple elements or all the elements that you want to select. So right now I have selected the circle and that pink rectangle. But let's say I don't wanna select the circle. I just wanna select the rectangle. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna click the circle. It's going to unselect the circle, but as you will notice, it has kept that rectangle selected. So from here, I could change the color of the rectangle. I can make it green or blue or purple, and I can also then move it to the front if I want. So I could select position and I could put to front and I can manipulate it however I need. The next way is to hold down command or control if you're using a PC as you click. So for example, if I click this first rectangle, but I really wanna select the text box that I know is underneath, I'm gonna hold down command and click again. You will notice it deselected that rectangle and selected the layer underneath, which is that text box. The final way, and it probably is the easiest way if you're not familiar with a lot of these shortcuts, is to use the layers. So I've already clicked position up here at the top, but if you don't see that side toolbar, just click on position and then select layers. From there, you're gonna see a list of all of your layers, or you can see just the ones that are overlapping there. You can click on any layer and it will automatically select it. And you can also click and drag in order to re-layer them and put one on top of another. That is it. Those are five more Canva hacks that will hopefully make your life easier, especially as you are using Canva to design various resources for your classroom. If you missed the first Canva hacks video or you just want a refresher, the link for that as well as the playlist with all of my Canva videos will be down in the description box. If you want more videos like this, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed it and you got some new ideas, you learned something new, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.